In this Inkscape lesson, we'll learn how to use drop shadows to add a paper cutout effect to an illustration. For this video, we'll put our drawing within the outline of a bear. Now if you're feeling really artistic, you can of course draw the bear yourself or draw something else to use as the outline. However, to save us some time in this video, we're going to vectorize an imported image of a bear using Trace Bitmap. So first, let's go up here to the File menu and choose Import. The image we'll use is this brown bear image, which I found for free online. You can find a link to the image in the description below in case you would like to download it and use it to follow along with the lesson. Okay, so to import the image, let's double click it, then click OK here. Let's pan over here some by pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. Let's move the image over here. Now we can open the Trace Bitmap dialog by right clicking the image and choosing Trace Bitmap. As you can see in the preview, the default settings do a pretty good job with this image because it's pretty simple and has a transparent background. So we can just click apply down here, then move the tracing over here, and delete the image. Okay, let's zoom in on the bear some by putting our cursor near it, then pressing down the control key and scrolling up the mouse wheel. At the moment, we have a couple empty spots in this path for the eye here. We actually want to fill these areas in. One way to do this is to select the object and go to path, Break apart, which creates new paths in those areas. Then go to Path Union, which combines all the selected paths into a single path. Okay, next we're going to give this bare path the colors of the night sky. So, first let's open the Fill and Stroke dialog with this button up here. Let's give the bear a dark blue fill. Now let's give it a linear gradient with this button. Then let's switch to the gradient tool over here. First we want to grab the opaque stop and move it to the top of the bear. Then let's grab the transparent stop, hold control to constrain the angle, and move it down here. We don't have to go all the way to the bottom of the bear because we'll be covering most of it up with mountains and trees. Alright now in the fill and stroke dialog, let's raise the alpha channel of this stop all the way up and give it more of a cyan fill. Ok, that looks pretty good. Now let's work on the mountains. For this we can just switch to the pin tool here and create a simple path that looks like mountains. We want to start over here outside of the bear path. Over here we want to click outside of the bear then break it down around the bottom and back to the first point to close it off. Next, let's turn off the stroke of this path by going to the Stroke Paint tab of the Fill and Stroke dialog and clicking the X here. Let's give it a white fill. Now we could wait until the end to add all of the drop shadows, but let's go ahead and see how it works by adding one to this path. To do this, we go to Filters, Shadows and Glows, Drop Shadow. Let's go ahead and check Live Preview. I've actually been playing around with the settings of mine, so it likely looks quite a bit different from yours, but as you can see on my screen, the path now has a drop shadow coming out at the right. To get the correct result, we want to have the shadow type here set to Outer, which puts the shadow on the outside of the path. And if we go to the Blur Color tab, we want to have the color set to Black with an opacity that's less than 100%. We also want to have this Use Objects Color option turned off. If we go back to the Options tab, we can increase or decrease the blur radius of the shadow, and we can set the horizontal and vertical offsets of the shadow. With both offsets set to positive values, it looks like the light source is located somewhere at the top left. Okay, when we have this shadow the way we want it, we can click Apply and close out the dialog. Now of course we want to hide the part of the mountains that are outside of the bear path, which we'll do with clipping, but first with the pen tool still active, let's create another path for the mountains which we'll use to add some color to them.
We want to bring this down around the bottom of the white path and close it off. Now let's turn off the stroke and give it a light blue fill. Okay, now we want to cut off the parts of this blue path that are outside of the white path. To do this, we can switch to the select tool and select the white path, duplicate it with the control D, hold shift and select the blue path, and go to path, intersection. Also, you might not be able to see it well in the video, but due to anti-aliasing, the white path is slightly visible at some of the edges here. To fix this, we can duplicate the blue path with the control D, hold shift and select the white path, and go to path, difference. Okay, next we're going to use a duplicate of the bear path to clip out the parts of the mountain paths that are outside of the bear. First, let's hold shift and select the blue path. Let's group these mountain paths together with control G. Now let's select the bear path and duplicate it with control D, then hold shift and select the mountain group, right click, and choose set clip. Perfect. Let's now go back to the pin tool and create another layer of mountains in front of this one. Let's bring it down around the bottom of the bear and close it off. Now let's turn off the stroke, then give it a dark blue fill. Next, let's give it a drop shadow by going to Filters, Shadows and Glows, Drop Shadow. Let's check Live Preview to see how it looks. I think that looks pretty good, so I'll click Apply and close it out. Now we can clip this path by switching to the Select tool and duplicating the bear path. Then hold Shift and select the mountain path, right click, and set clip. Let's now create some trees. For this, we can switch to the Pin tool, start out here, and create a path with a bunch of triangles at the top. Let's turn off the stroke and give it a dark green fill. Now let's give it a drop shadow. I'll just leave the settings the same, but feel free to adjust them a bit if you want. Now let's clip this by switching to the select tool, duplicating the bear path, Holding shift and selecting the tree path, then right clicking and choosing set clip. Let's go back to the pin tool and create one more layer of trees. Let's turn off the stroke and give it a lighter green fill. Then let's give it a drop shadow and clip it. Okay, next we can add some stars and maybe a comet or something to the sky. First, for the comet, let's switch to the squares and rectangles tool here and create a long thin rectangle over here. Let's grab this circular handle at the top right and drag it down as far as it will go to round the corners. Now let's turn it into a path by going to Path, Object to Path, then let's switch to the Node tool here, select all of the nodes on the left, 
and join them into a single node by clicking this button up here. And we can hold control and drag this node to the left a bit more to stretch it out. Okay, let's give this a bright cyan fill. Then let's give it a linear gradient and raise the transparent stops alpha channel all the way up. Now let's double click the gradient line here near the last stop. Let's make it a bit brighter. Then we can select the last stop again and make it white. And we can adjust the offset of the inner stop sum if we want. Okay, now let's switch to the select tool and move the comet onto the sky. And we can resize it while holding shift and control. We can also rotate it by clicking it again, then dragging one of the corner handles. Now let's give it a drop shadow. We're likely going to have to lower these three settings a bit to get it to look right. I think that looks good, so I'll click apply and close this out. Next for the stars, we can switch to the stars and polygons tool here, and with the default settings chosen in the controls bar, Let's create a small star in here. If your star doesn't look right, you can click this button up here to reset the settings to the defaults. Let's give the star a white fill. Then give it a drop shadow. I'll lower all of these a little more. That should work. Now let's add some duplicates of the star to the sky. To do this easily, we can use stamping. To stamp, we can switch to the select tool, move the star somewhere, and press the space bar to create a duplicate there. I'm going to resize some of these a bit while holding shift and control. Okay, we're finished with the landscape. Next, let's add an inner drop shadow to the bear path. However, because the bear path is at the bottom, we're going to need a duplicate of the bear path that's above everything. So first, let's select the path and duplicate it with Control D. Now let's add a drop shadow to it. Let's go ahead and check Live Preview. At the moment, the shadow is on the outside because we have outer chosen as the shadow type. If we change this to inner, it puts the shadow on the inside, which is what we want but we still can't see anything that's underneath the path. So instead of inner, we want to choose inner cutout. There we go. Now, of course, we want to increase all of the settings again to make the shadow more noticeable. Okay, that looks good. Finally, let's add a white border to all of this. To do this, let's first duplicate the shadow path we have selected, then let's make it white, and turn off the drop shadow filter by going to filters, remove filters. Now let's click this button up here to put it below everything. Next we want to offset the path. For this we can first go to path, dynamic offset. Then switch to the node tool, which shows us this diamond handle at the top right that we can drag out to offset the path. Okay, now we want to turn this dynamic offset path into a normal path by going to path, object to path. Let's switch to the select tool to hide the nodes. If we zoom in some, we can see that it might have left a few tiny empty areas in the path. So we can go to Path, Break Apart, then Path, Union. Finally, if we want, we can add a drop shadow to this as well.
And of course, we want to set the type back to outer. And there we have it. Thank you very much for joining me in this lesson. I'll see you in the next one.